Well good day everyone, it's Warren here from NQ Explorers in Queensland, Australia. Today's video is on how to build yourself a 19th century gold cradle or rocker box. Uh, the video is essentially in three parts. I'll put the timestamps down below in the description. Part one will be the history of the gold cradle and how it, it came to the Australian gold fields. Uh, part two, will, I'll show you the box itself and how it's built and how it operates and uh, give you some dimensions so you can knock one up in the shed at home. In part three, we'll hit the bush and uh, do some cradling and hopefully get some colour. So uh, really, if you're just starting out in the world of prospecting, get yourself a good quality gold pan like these garret pans and you can build yourself a rocker box for virtually nothing from scrap in the shed. Thanks for watching. Edward Hargraves was the man responsible for triggering the gold rush in New South Wales in the 1850s and soon after his discovery even larger finds were made in Victoria. Although Europeans had settled in Australia in 1788, it took over 50 years for them to begin successfully extracting commercial quantities of the country's vast gold resources. The slow start was partly due to the lack of prospecting experience, but it was also driven by the British government who felt that, given the large convict population in the early 1800s, it would draw people away from more established labouring activities. The main catalyst for change occurred in 1848 when gold was discovered in California and thousands of gold seekers learnt how to identify and extract gold from the newly found gold fields. These are the men and women we now call the old timers. In 1849, Australian prospector Edward Hargraves arrived in California seeking to make his fortune. But after two years on the diggings, he had had little success in finding gold. However, his newly found experience and talks with other prospectors convinced him that if he returned to Australia, he would find gold in the New South Wales countryside. In January 1851, he arrived back in Sydney, Australia, and just over a month later, set out over the Blue Mountains to an area he remembered was similar to sites where gold had been found in California. Hargroves informed Mr. Stutchbury, the government geologist, and went with him accompanied by about 37 horsemen to Summer Hill Creek, which he had named Ophir. After washing several pans of earth in Mr. Stutchbury's presence, the geologist was satisfied of the truth of the claim, and gold well, had indeed been discovered in the colony of New South Wales. Hargroves then instructed a Mr. William Tom to construct a gold cradle, just like he'd seen in the California rushes. Incredibly, this gold cradle, the first ever constructed in Australia, still exists in the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences in Sydney. Although Hargraves is credited with the first discovery of gold in Australia, in fact gold had been found by Europeans as early as 1823. But the real legacy of Hargraves was his application of California prospecting methodology and the introduction of a simple mining technology like the gold cradle. Okay, well let's have a look at the build. This is the roughly half scale rocker box that I built many years ago in the shed. <coughs> the uh, frame that it's sitting on isn't actually part of a traditional rocker box system, but I'll explain that later. What I'll do now, I'll pull it all apart. I'll have a look at the component parts of the rocker box. I'll give you some measurements so you can uh, manufacture one of your own. Okay, so this is the basic rocker body. Um, traditional shape and style of a uh, gold cradle. It's just a uh, marine ply that I've painted. Um, and it actually evolved over time as I used it. Some of these modifications you see aren't traditional either. But they helped uh, in the operation of the box. And what I was trying to do with a lot of these components, such as the aluminium rails, was to reduce wear on the wood. So it's just basically a box that's two feet long. I'm going to use old imperial measurements. It doesn't make any sense to build a box to metric scale. Two feet long, it's nine inches wide, and the box is uh, six inches high in the hopper area. You can set this up however you like and make it as long as you like. Generally, boxes are four feet or less because they had to be transported. And um, the work site for a cradle was often worked by four men. So you've got four mates, one's digging gravel, one's cradling, One's using the water and one's doing the cleanup. So, um, if you have a look at this, it's basically just a floor with uh, three walls. I've got this handle which I've uh, put a wing nut on so that you can actually fold it and transport it in the back of your ute or your uh, four wheel drive. Um, it's just put together with uh, screws and nails. I did it the traditional way and it's lasted a long time actually. Um, and it's been wet quite often that this marine ply doesn't swell I guess and it's uh, hung on really well 
what you need to do now is look inside the cradle and how this is set up for the uh, the first baffle. Now I'll show you the first baffle and where it goes in the cradle. So this component part's the first baffle. Traditionally this would have been canvas. So you get wet canvas, gets a bit of a belly in it and it holds the gravel and heavies and the large golden pickers will go into this first baffle. The principle is that the first baffle slopes backward in the box like that. So uh, it screens through the hopper which I'll show you in a minute, hits this first baffle, runs to the back of the box and down the sluice, if you like, as it's being agitated. Okay, so the way I fitted this into the box was inside I just put a couple of little plywood uh, lugs there on the side so that this baffle sits inside at an angle to the rear of the box, like that. Okay, now that's just marine carpet that I got from the local hardware store on there. Um, you can use whatever you like. But it's just got to be some kind of uh, gold trapping material, miner's moss or whatever. On top of that, I put this what we call in Australia snake wire. It's a six mil or quarter inch uh, galvanized, uh, punched, it's not woven, wire. It's designed for preventing uh, snakes to get into your chook pen. So I've got the snake wire on there, six millimeter quarter inch grid. So any pickers or large uh, gold will actually sit on this baffle and won't go any further. The fines and the um, and the rest of the gravel migrate to the back of the box with the agitation and they go down that slot there and they go into the main floor of the box. Now at the back I put another aluminium baffle to kind of deflect the uh, material into the base of the box. Otherwise if you've got a right angle in there it sort of chogs up and you ended up you, you get a lot of uh, material caught in there and often there's gold stuck in there because it doesn't migrate any further. That sort of deflects it and it runs it down the mat and it runs off your heavies and fines quite nicely. Um, incidentally, this is the underside of the box I didn't show you. That's just got a rounded rocker and a small rounded one at the front. And I'll explain later why I've got that frame that I showed you earlier and why that hole's there. Okay, at the bottom of the box, this, uh, this aluminium strip here, it's a little bit of L-shaped aluminium. That's what I call a panic bar, so none of the real heavy... Anything, if I'm too... Uh, violent with the box or the angle's too great you may you risk losing with uh, gold off the end so i've just put that just to hold the last bit of uh, gold desperately to the bottom of the box and then there's another little one at the bottom and of course then you, your muller keep and your uh, oversize or whatever you've got in there coming ac across the box that isn't gold migrates across the front of the box with the agitation so that's the basic uh, box and the baffle that goes in it now the first one i built had no uh, wire on it it worked quite well, but I just sort of put the wire because it does catch uh, pickers quite well and they just sit in there and they won't move. And uh, so you can actually visually see uh, the larger pieces of gold you've got as soon as you take the hopper off. Okay, this is the next component part. That's the uh, gravel hopper, or the feed hopper. Uh, once again, you've got the six mil quarter inch snake wire in the base. Um, I classify the material down with one of those Garrett classifiers, which is roughly 10, 12 mil um, classifier, almost half inch, I think. Uh, any large gravel you don't want in this because it's not going to work it's, it's just going to chog up your hopper now the hopper is uh, slightly narrower than the box the box is nine inches wide that's eight and a half inches and the uh, the design there is so that this as you can see the hopper slides left and right against the rocking motion to agitate the wet gravel and get it to migrate down through the bottom of the, uh, the hopper onto the first baffle so this is a situation you get with this, that just vibrates all day like that. That's why I put these aluminium wear rails on here because it was wood on wood otherwise and once that's all wet and lubricated it slides really well. As you can see the hopper's got a couple of uh, plywood uh, runners on the side that just sit there so that it runs back and forward. I started out with a 3mm screen, it was too small, it just kept chogging up all the time so I've gone to the 6mm screen. This works really well. You can put a lot of gravel through a rock or even this size. Um, you still got to clean up in a pan but you can process a lot more gravel from a spot without having to clean up very often with a cradle. So that's the next component, that's the uh, feed hopper. Okay, the next component is the medium that you're going to catch the gold on in the base of the box. I'm just using this old outdoor carpet, it's uh, getting a bit long in the tooth. I should actually burn this because it'll be full of gold, fine gold that's not coming out of it, it gets trapped in there. You can use miner's moss or uh, even the old timers just use uh, wooden baffles. So the way I've designed that is it just slides up in 
inside the box and it tucks under this little aluminium panic bar at the front. So it sits in there like that. Now I do have a dream mat that I haven't actually fitted to the box. I've got the small dream mat, I've got a cut to that uh, 9 inch width, and I've also got large dream mat, the commercial style dream mat. Now dream mat is the best thing you can have for catching gold because it's so easy to clean up. It's designed on that vortex system where the, you get the, a, good, a constant water flow and the vortex traps the uh, material in these little pockets. Now you're not going to get a constant water flow in a cradle so that's one reason I haven't put the uh, dream mat in the box. I'm definitely going to do it and try it out. It'll make the clean up a lot easier because dream mat is so easy to clean. Um, not really a traditional way to uh, trap gold but very very efficient way to trap gold. The vortexes won't work but there are so many uh, baffles and riffles on dream mat that yes it's going to trap everything that comes down through here anyway. So that's your, that's your next thing, that's your medium that you're going to catch the gold in uh, once it's been processed through the hopper and the first baffle. Now the final component of the puzzle is this frame. That's nothing to do with traditional rocker boxing or cradling. The first time I took it out I used it just like this. I found that the, uh, the rocker got bogged in the gravel. So then I took a sheet of plywood but the thing would walk off the plywood with the agitation and you'd end up down in the creek. So what I've done here is just built a simple pine frame with a backward facing pin which fits into the uh, cradle here underneath like that. So what you've actually got is a standalone system whereby the rocker is independent of the gravel and you can actually sit it down in the creek really, it doesn't matter where you put it, but it's not going to go anywhere. So you've got the pin holding at the back and I've got a little uh, plywood bar on the front to stop the rocker uh, creeping forward as you agitate it. So as you see it here, this is the system that I use in the bush. Uh, that's complete. That's developed, that's about a Mark VI rocker box because I added components and developed it as I went. It doesn't weigh very much, I don't know, seven or eight kilos. Um, uh, it's very simple to use and it's easier to store because you can fo fold the handle down uh, to transport it. Uh, that's about it. You can make it out of aluminium, but I mean, you've probably got some scrap timber in the shed that you can uh, make this out of. It doesn't have to be marine ploy. Just keep in mind that wood will swell, but of course it's going to wear and uh, as, as I did, you probably modify it as you go. So they're the main uh, components of the box. Um, one other thing I've got to explain that I get a lot of questions about on my other videos is the number on the side. Okay, everywhere in Australia, every state except South Australia, you have to have some sort of permit or uh, miner's right to uh, fossic or mine for uh, precious metals such as gold and silver or gemstones. It's just a government tax. You have to pay it annually or some states like WA and Victoria there uh, uh, for 10 years or five years. It depends on the state you're in. And if you're international, well, you're, uh, wherever you are, your jurisdiction will no doubt have some say in how you prospect. But uh, just go to your local, um, it's, you can get these permits online, just go to your um, state mines department um, and you pay a fee and uh, that's all you have to do. The reason I got it on the box is if uh, the mines inspector ever showed up where I was uh, cradling in the creek, well, I can identify that I've paid a permit and I've got a, um, a right to be where I am doing what I am. I've also got a paper copy of the uh, fossicking license for here in Queensland. I've also got licenses for all over Australia too because I travel a bit um, metal of technique so you have to have uh, a license or a miner's right to look for metals uh, and gemstones anywhere in Australia so except South Australia. So that's basically uh, that, that's the components of the rocker box. Um, we'll just run through the dimensions again you've got two feet long nine inches wide the hopper's about eight and a half inches wide by nine it's almost square it's about six inches in height um, I mean, you can just make your dimensions proportional. Uh, if you have a look at the link you know, uh, I've got in the description on the video, that'll go to our NQ Explorer's uh, vlog, and there is a, um, a link to a, a plan of the box, the actual plans that I used. I adapted them slightly, but I just adjusted the scale. If you've got a piece of plywood that's sitting around in the shed, you'd be able to knock this one up in a couple of hours, and uh, you're into the hobby of uh, prospecting. Okay, we're just heading down to the creek with the Land Rover rocker boxes in the back. This little tributary is a uh, spot where I've got some nice colour and pickers in the past. Uh, there's a couple of nice little rock bars and gravel benches and that kind of thing. So I'll get some samples. Uh, we'll classify it down. 
and we'll put it through the rocker box. I'm not sure how much water's in the creek, we'll find out when we get there, but uh, if uh, failing any water in the creek, we'll head to another spot where I know there's a bit of a billabong and we can actually uh, wash the gravel. So uh, we're almost there. Okay, it's pretty tropical down in here. We've had some recent rain, the creek's not actually running, but uh, there's plenty of water for cradling. Um, I'm going to go up around the corner here and sample some gravel. Um, I'm going to hand classify it because it's a little bit clayy and I want to leave the clay balls in the hopper so that they break up with the agitation of the rocking. Um, and then we'll run four or five buckets through and do a clean up and see if we've got any gold from that rock bar. I won't show you the sampling, if you have a look at that card in the uh, top of the video now, that links to a uh, where to sample for gold in a stream video that we produced uh, a little while back. Um, I won't clutter this video with that stuff. You can look at that separately, but we'll get on with it now. We'll get a sample and start cradling. Okay, we've got a sample there. Got the garret pan for the cleanup later. Little shovel to feed the hopper. And this little bucket here. It's about two litre bucket. I'm going to use as a dipper in this little billabong. So, uh, I have made an old dipper from a jam tin. Old timer style, but if you want to be really authentic, you can do that. <laughs> that will just wet all this carpet down. We're just about good to go. Okay, I put a bit of an overflow pan in there. That's an old oven pan. Uh, just so we can catch some of the uh, anything that comes over the bottom of the box. The uh, muller keep, in other words. And I might put it back through it again later. We'll see how we go. See what we get out of this. So let's get going here. So you can see that's quite a clayey material. Okay, also I've, uh, I've put a, a quarter quantity of water in with the uh, sample I've dug, so that's a uh, nice liquid limit there. And I'm not actually trying to wet the material while it's in the box, it's already wet. So uh, let's get started here. Bit of water. And you can see it's starting to come down the uh, carpet now. Nice flow there, pretty good angle. I might adjust it slightly. See the agitation motion of the hopper there. Now once your gravel's nice and clean, just make sure you haven't got any nuggets in there, anything over <laughs> six millimeters around, it won't go through that snake wire. That gravel looks pretty clean to me. Yep, we'll just put that in that bottom pan there. So we're getting down the smaller material now. You see it flowing in the mat there. Just dump one hopper load off. You can see all that material has migrated at the bottom of the bar. I'm going to drop the gold. I don't want to increase the angle on this too much because uh, you get a rush of water in the wrong spot. You need that material in suspension and the small stuff just drifting over that bottom bar. That's going well. We'll keep, uh, keep crowding the rest of this bucket.
much rhythm there. You get the water to evenly distribute down the mat as it's running down to the bottom of the box. I've adjusted that angle so that, that oversized lighter stuff just creeping over that front bar. I mean, it's probably not necessary, the gold will be stuck in the mat anyway. Okay, I've put about five buckets through the rocker box now. Um, I'm going to do a clean up. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of material built up on that panic bar, but I don't mind that, that's not much to pan. So I'll take the mat out, first we'll inspect the uh, first baffle, then we'll remove the mat from the box, wash the box out, wash the mat, and pan off the fines and the heavies and uh, see how much colour we've got. Okay, so let's take the hopper off and see what we've got stuck in here. This is the first baffle. Bit of gravel was in there, be careful you don't upset all this. Oh, look at that. We've got some nice pickers in there and some up higher too so that looks good we've got to wash this in the bucket you can see there's a lovely line of pickers there they sort of uh, migrated about uh, three quarters of the way down this first baffle and then we'll take that mat out and we'll clean all that up and pan it off in the uh, Garrett gold trap pan just uh, make sure that is upside down and everything that's in it is upset and gone. There's going to be some rocks left in it, but I'll just carefully put that back in the Land Rover and uh, take it home and inspect it to make sure we haven't missed anything in there. Okay, whatever's there should have gone into the bucket. Okay, now we'll get the, um, the mat out of the bottom and wash it in the bucket too. Just uh, prise this mat off the bottom here with the trusty uh, field knife. Okay, we be good there. Now, better get this into the bucket of water without upsetting it too much. There we go, we haven't locked anything there. Now, what I'll do is turn this backwards. Actually, this carpet here I've been using for many years. What I should do now is actually burn it and get the gold out of it because uh, there'll be lots of little gold that just never gets out of this. I have got dream mat, as I mentioned earlier, that I could use in the box. It's a lot easier to clean, of course, the dream mat. Well, that looks pretty good for now. Now I'll take the cradle off the frame. Now I've got this handy bucket of water here. I'll just uh, make sure we haven't got anything that was wedged up under the mat. And we get all the fines out of the box. A little bit more there. Okay. Okay, well here's our pan of concentrates from the uh, rocker box. About five buckets uh, from my sample location. I've got it in the Garrett Gold Trap. And now we'll wash it up in the Billabong and see how much gold we've got in this pan. Just going to stir it up in the bottom. Make sure we haven't got any. Uh, we'll make sure we've got all the material into suspension. Now I do have some uh, gold panning videos. I'll put the links to those too. Not really a gold panning video. We just want to clean up what we've got in the rocker box today. So let's see how we go.
I can see some nice colour coming up already. That's a pretty rich little spot. I have got a quite a bit of gold from this creek in the past because uh, you get the big floods here in the wet season and uh, a lot of uh, gold and a lot of wash comes down this creek. So um, this is the tributary to a larger creek, but always a good spot for a bit of gold. This is looking good. Look at this. It shows you how efficient that rocker box is. It just doesn't miss anything. And that's with that ancient... Uh, outdoor carpet I've got in it. It's uh, been there a few years. Now look at that. That is a nice little run of gold. There's some uh, there's some good size flakes in there and lots of fine stuff. Pretty happy with that. There we go. Well that's a nice little run of gold there. I think we've done well. For our day's outing with a little rocker box and uh, these gravity trap pans. Get yourself a good pan. Don't go cheap on the pan because, uh, and these aren't terribly expensive. These are the best pans you can get, these Garrett pans. Um, they are the best in the world. We've had a big super sluice for nearly 30 years and it is just a ripper. It's faded white and it's bashed around, but it still works. The thing about the Garrett pans is that uh, even for beginners, uh, they're very forgiving of your technique. And of course, uh, old hands that are used to a tin pan find these very easy. But uh, anyway, good day out. Well, I hope you found that informative, everyone. Uh, a rocker box, if you'd build it yourself in the shed, is an inexpensive way to get into the hobby. You just need a good quality pan to clean up your finds, as I just demonstrated, and you will get some gold. Um, make sure you check out our videos on how to sample and where to sample in a creek. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you know when we put up a new NQ Explorers prospecting or relic hunting video. Thanks for watching and happy fossicking everyone.